Dickens love roosters, geese love ganders, everyone else loves Ned Flanders. Not me. Everyone who counts loves Ned Flanders. <laughs> Knock that off, you two. It's time for church. We're not going to church today. Uh, what? You give me one good reason. It's Saturday. <laughs> oh, gilly do gilly do Hens love roosters, geese love ganders, everyone else loves Ned Flanders. All right, welcome to our Bible study today. Uh, the title message is going to be, Ain't No Ned Flanders, and Neither Should You Be. And as you can see through the clip, uh, you know, we just kind of was, was an idea of what Ned Flanders represents and just the idea of how... Uh, he, how churchy he is and things like that. Uh, what's kind of funny is that the clip we just listened to is that our lives are a little bit worse than the Flanders is that we would actually have to go to church on Saturdays because we, you know, in our mother churches, we do have church on Saturdays. But what I want to talk about today is that this idea of what Ned Flanders represents, this idea of what his family represents, this whole idea of what we have made and, and created of what a Christian represents. And so in our last message, we talked about the idea of the fire of the forefathers. And we spoke about, we always speak about how much we need this fire, but we totally forget <clears throat> the idea of having their heart. And so in this message, it's going to be about the idea of, of this heart and not worrying about the world, even the church around you. Uh, so the, the thing is, we have created a man-made idea of what a Christian is supposed to be. If we are to be used by God, a person should look and be like Ned Flanders. Otherwise, the person is probably not totally in line with God, is what we think. Uh, we have ingrained this in our head, and we feel in order to be used by God, we have to fit this man-made mold created by us and the world and what a Christian should be. So now that's the scary thing, is that because what we're, what we're doing is that we're saying that in order for you to be uh, a certain uh, leader or a certain person in the church, if you don't fit this mold, you cannot be one of these leaders. You can't be something used by God. And that's just a total wrong teaching that we are being taught. Because that is not what Christ taught us to do. Christ taught us to be something totally different. He told us not to fit the, fit the mold of the world or the church itself. I mean, his ideals were totally against the church, the Pharisees and everything. And in order for us to be able to break that idea or mold, we have to grasp a connection with Christ and God and understand that we are not supposed to be the certain image, you know, especially created by the world and the people around us and the church around us, because these are all man-made images and ideals, and that we need to be different, and we have to have something that is truly from God. And so we need to stop letting ourselves suppress what God really wants us to be, or who He wants us to be, or how He wants us to be, because what we do is that if we do not fall in line with this image of Flanders, we feel like we, we are, we're, we're not up to par of a real Christian. And we keep doing that over and over again. And that is just not what we're supposed to do. And that's just something I learned on my own. And the idea of not worrying what people think about you. Not worrying how they look at you. And not trying to mold yourself into what they need you to be. Uh, but you got to be straight up what God tells you to do. And do what he tells you that needs to be done. You know, that's the idea that we're going to kind of uh, look at today. And so, um, there's going to be three main points we're going to talk about. And the first one is going to be <clears throat> disnourishment. The second one is going to be empowerment. And the third one is going to be godliness. And yes, this is another made up word uh, for the number one. <laughs> I know um, my man Josh is going to hate me for this one. But this is another word that came to mind was the idea of disnourishment. And what does that mean? So what I want to do is uh, turn to our Bibles to James chapter 1 and verses 22 and to 27. And it says right there, But prove yourselves doers of the word, and not merely hearers who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. And so <clears throat> this is the idea we're talking about right now. It kind of goes with the word disnourishment is the idea of that you know once we um we what we do is we tend to do have an experience with god in his realness and then f totally forget the source of where it came from and what we do is um you know we've experienced this we know who god is we know the truth and what he has done for us and whenever god keeps telling us to do more and more things instead we start going in our own way 
And this is what it says in verse 23 and 24. Again, I'm going to read it again. It says, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. So this is the idea that, like, you know, you just looked at yourself in the mirror and then go away and you for forgot the total image of what you were supposed to be. And that's what happens to us when we create this ideal, when we create this, uh, this man, you know, this man-made mold of what a Christian should be is that we know the image of what we need to be or what we need to exemplify. But once we walk away from God or, or you know, disconnect from him, we start creating our own image because we totally forgot and disconnected with what he wants us to do. And so, like I said, is that <clears throat> it says, you know, we create an image of our own thoughts being eradicated through our flesh and not understanding where that change came from. And what we do is we create, you know, something totally different like this Ned Flanders character. You know, instead of, it's like, it was straight from God and no one else before. Yet, like this title of the series, <clears throat> what we begin to do is create our own existence and in turn creating this ex existential church and pe people of stupidity. Um, you know, it just turns out to be the image that we come to, to grips with is we have to be this Ned Flanders character. And it it starts to overflow into everyone else is starting to think like this. The world starts to think like this. And everyone else, like, if you don't fit this mold, and if you try to, you know, even preach or even share this and that, if you don't look exactly like this type of mold, people will question you. People will think about you weirdly. And they don't, they don't, they don't uh, associate you with the church. And that is a problem that we're facing. Because if you looked at Christ in his life, he wasn't the mold of what the church was at all. He was totally against the mold of the Pharisees and, and the and that church, but he was God, and he was what God, he was what God wanted us to be, and we're supposed to be like Christ. And what you got to understand is that it's not always going to be the popular good person that you're supposed to exemplify. It didn't stop with Christ, and that's the thing that people don't understand is that it went on with Paul, it went on with Peter. These people were persecuted by the same type of church because they didn't fit the mold that it was popular to be. Of what a church person is supposed to be they went against it because that's what god wanted and you know like i said is that yeah sometimes we know this image or we've we've felt this experience we know the realness of god but we tend, tend to forget it because we let our flesh in, in intertwine and that's the whole idea we see here in james is that you already know what you're supposed to do you see what god is telling you to do you look yourself in the mirror and you're like all right this is the image of god that he has put upon me i'm going to continue like that the moment we kind of just turn away, we totally forget, and we're like, I kind of know the image, and we start creating our own image instead of looking back at the mirror and understanding what our image was that God already had showed us, and we totally disconnect from God. And so, um, that's the idea of disnourishment. Was that is the idea is that you were once nourished and you've been fed this real bread and this real word of God, but then we take away when we walk away from it. We, we disnourish ourselves. We take away that nourishment that God has straight up given to us. And that's what we do is we, you know, we've taken away what got, you know, something that's been, you know, handed to us to help us. And we just kind of taken away from us. And so that's the main point from uh, the first uh, point. Uh, it it kind of goes on in, in, in the verses 25 and I skip 26 and 1 to 27. It says that, but one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having becoming a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. And it says in 27, that pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. So this is going to kind of uh, go to our next point of what, what God is saying, or what the Word is saying here, is that what is real, you know, religion or what what god wants from us it's something more real and not rot from our flesh you know uh he's saying that whenever i'm speaking to you and telling you what to do you actually do what i'm telling you to do instead of doing your own thing and start creating this church of your own fleshly thing because he's saying look what really is what god wants what's pure undefiled religion in the sight of our god and father is this to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world and what does that really mean is god is saying that um, what I want from you is to show love, and that's what we need to show, and that's that's the basis of what I am. God is love, and that's what I want you to exemplify. And that's not what is going to be exemplified if we keep going through our own fleshly image or what we try to exemplify of what the church should be. It's totally missing the boat of love, and so that's what the point number two is: empowerment. 
And we're going to use uh, <clears throat> the verse in 1 John chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. It says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. So, in, this is what God's, I mean, this is what the word is telling us straight up is that in order for us to show who God is and to show Christ, it has to be through our love. And there's no other way to exemplify it. It's not how you grow your mustache out. It's not how you have your hair set. It's not how you, you know, dress. It's not how you make your image that will show God's love or, or God's image or God's whatever. It's not going to be through that. It's going to be through something different and through the, through the heart. And for us to show <clears throat> our um, uh, what God is supposed to be, it has to be from our heart and through love. Um, and so that's the way uh, we get empowered by God or the way of uh, empowerment is through love and actually showing that love. And the third point is, is godliness. Now this is an important uh, point I want to make, uh, is the idea of really taking to grips of what we need to uh, become or how or what we need to do through God and what we're gonna do is read through um, John chapter 15 verses 1 through 3 it says I am the real vine and my father is a farmer he cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes and every branch that is grape bearing he prunes back so it will bear even more fruit so you are already pruned back by the message I've spoken so this is the idea that in order for us to actually do what God wants us to be or the image that God wants us to do we have to put to death our idea of what an image of a Christian needs to be. And that's a very hard thing to do, and that's easier said than done because we have so many things ingrained in our head of what a churchy person represents, what a person of Christianity represents. And like I said, the overall thinking is we have to be up to this image of Ned Flanders or that type of family or this and that. We have to always look good. We have to do something nice and, and, and have a appropriate image in order to do what God needs us to do. But that is not right at all. It's not exactly right. So in order to really do what God needs to do, we need to let God prune us back. Because most of the time, that is what holds us back. Sometimes people get in the mindset of saying, oh, I'm an evangelist now, so I don't know if I can do this and that. And you might suppress what God's telling you to do. Or I'm a pastor now, so I don't know if I can do this and that. Or I need to, you know, make sure the people are okay and pleased and this and that. And what we're doing is we're kind of suppressing what Christ wants us to do or the Spirit tells us to do because we're so afraid of how our image is going to be portrayed in the sense of that, ooh, if I do this, it's going to take away my image of what a churchy Christian represents. And that's like I said, that's a very scary thing. But we need to seek this uh, godliness to be like God. And the only way we could do this is for Him to purify us. And like it says right here is that, you know, our fa the Father is going to cut off every branch of me that doesn't bear fruit or grapes, it says. And that's the people He's going to take away. And now He's going to say the ones that do bear fruit, He wants to prune you even more so that you'll bear even more fruit. And that's the thing that you need to be able to let God do. You may be able to bear fruits and do things, but it takes an even more bigger step for you to say, all right, God, I want you to prove me even more. And you have to allow God to tear away these ideas that is, that is ingrained in you that say that, look, in order for you to be a real Christian, you have to look this way. In order for you to do this and that, you have to be this way. You have to speak this way. You have to do this and that. Sometimes God's going to make you do some very scary things that is not popular, especially among the church. And if you're not able to say, all right, I'm ready to do what you want me to do, God. I'm ready for you to prune me back and do this and that. You're never, ever going to be able to do what, what God wants you to do. So that's what I'm saying is that you shouldn't be, it's, you know, the title of this message is, I ain't no Ned Flanders, and neither should you be. And it's, you know, it's kind of comical and this and that, but it is a very serious and scary thing is that you need to stay away from trying to fit this image of a Christian, but actually seek the realness of what God is and what his spirit is about or what really is supposed to be, you know, molding and what, what is what is encompassing a Christian, a real Christian. So in the end, the idea is this, that, you know, we are always taught to be a certain way, a certain, um, you know, uh, image or things like that in the church. But God's calling us to be something totally different. In order for us to not get caught up in this, you know, existential church of stupidity is to not keep creating our own mold or image of what needs to be done in the church or through us and what we need to look like, but to exemplify God's love to other people. And through that, the image of God will be revealed. And they don't, you don't need to do anything on the outward to keep, you know, showing off your Christianity. 
to sh keep showing off what the church is supposed to be. People will understand it and see it and feel it because that's who God is. God is love. And once we, I, you know, take hold of that idea, that's how the, you know, the church will spread and that's how um, the church will actually grow is when we show our, our real love to the, to the people. And so that's the end of this message. Our next message is going to be t uh, talking about, we're going to end it off with the, um, uh, you know, the last message of the series. So um, I'm going to ask Josh to come up and play the guitar. Uh, and that, that'll end this thing. <laughs>